Good morning. It is indeed a, a blessing to uh, to be with you this morning. My name is Robert Blunt, president of A. Brown Ministries. I have to tell this story because I believe that God always has a way of putting a period on the trials and tribulations that we face in life. And it was two years ago that uh, we held services here at Hardy, and in between services, we were involved in an automobile accident with our ministry bus. And I don't think that it's ironic. I think that it's God's divine timing and his sovereign coordination that the one who helped us through that particular predicament by stepping up and challenging the community to give so that we could replace our bus is one who is with us and will be delivering the message today, and that is Tony Dungy. Thank you very much. Perception versus reality. Sometimes the grass looks greener, okay, someplace else doing things that uh, other people are doing. It looks like other people have it going on, and maybe I'll go try that. Okay. The grass isn't always greener uh, away from where you are. The grass isn't always greener outside of God's will. You made some decisions. Some of them went right, some of them went wrong, but you still in, in your heart understand God's taking care of you. And if you ever decide to turn fully back to him and really get back in his will and do the things that he talks about in his word, you know God's going to take care of you. That may be you today. Make those decisions for the Lord. If you don't know the Lord, you're going to have a chance today to find them, okay, and, and find out for yourself what it's all about. Just like everyone has said here, don't let that decision pass you by. Don't, don't, don't take it lightly because God can do great things even in tough situations if you put your trust in him and believe in him. Yeah. I thank you for your attention. You're a great audience. It's always great being here with you. Uh, I, I just thank you for the opportunity to come and share from my heart and tell you how special you are to me. Thank you. And I just want to say one thing to you, brothers, especially young brothers out there. Wake up. Wake up and listen. You might say, well, you've been in here all them times. How can you tell me anything? That's how I can tell you. Because I've been where you're at. And everybody won't be as blessed as I am. Everybody won't be blessed to come through this seven times. Because some don't make it to jail. The graveyard awaits a lot of us. Wake up, brothers, and have a change of mind. God bless you. The choice that man is making now is the choice that he's gonna be making on the street. I made a lot of bad choices. In December 17, 1985, I was released from Florida State Prison. And I've been out 23 years. You see, when people, you can have a test of lie, you can have a testimony. I'm not gonna give you no test of lie. I'm gonna give you a testimony. It wasn't easy. But through the grace of God, I'm still standing. But the choice is what you start right in here. The choice is what you do, gonna do when you get out. If you know anything about checkers, then it's your move. <laughs> what I wanna leave with you today is that you can be a messenger for God on this compound. Everybody on this compound can get saved. We're gonna go home and, uh, and, uh, and we're going in another direction, but you're gonna remain here. And every person on this compound that's saved, God has made an investment in you. And when God makes an investment, He's no different from anybody else. He expects dividends. And I challenge you every day 
to witness to somebody on this compound that's not saved. As we exhilarating to me to come out and just try to do something for the Lord, but really to, to reach out to guys who not a lot of people reach out to. You know that because of uh, what I do for a living or coaching professional football, you know you're going to have an audience, and then you just hope the word of the Lord really makes an impact on them. And I tried to tell a story to illustrate that uh, even though times are tough and things may look bleak, that uh, with the Lord, anything's possible, and you've got to have faith, you've got to have perseverance, and you've got to, got to keep going. I think it's a great ministry, uh, just need help in terms of finances, a of, of vehicle to get around. I know when Reverend Brown started, there were four prisons in, in Florida, and he could visit them all in a month. And now, he, you know, it's just a bigger job, and over 100,000 uh, inmates in the system. Uh, so just the logistics of getting around and getting there to visit people and get the message out, that's, that's the hardest thing. The biggest challenge is getting people to accept these offenders when they come back into society. How can we not be afraid? How can we give people a second chance? Employers, how can you open up? And it is tougher. Uh, you got economic times, everybody competing for jobs, uh, but we really need to give some of these men who do want to try to turn it around, give them a chance to succeed. Oh,